This is a Drama to Inspire webinar, and I'm going to be sharing with you lots of different techniques. I said that I would give you five techniques, and I will, but I will mention many others as we go along. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun, and there'll be lots to take away. Um, I know that people come from not just all over the world, but lots of different backgrounds as well. Um, so incredibly um, different varieties of students that people teach. So we're going to start off just with a little game. So this is called Circle and Cross. So what I would like you to do is to hold up your right finger and to draw a circle with it. All right. If any of you have been to my meetings before, you've probably played this game already. OK, I learned it from Augusto Boal, um, who's no longer with us, but was a wonderful teacher. OK, everybody got that circle with your right finger. Now, can you hold up your left hand? And what I'd like you to do is to draw a cross very simply. OK, and some of you have jumped the gun already. You, you know this game. Now we're going to hold up two fingers. And with your right hand, can you draw a circle? And with your left hand, a cross. Right hand, a circle, left hand, a cross. Brilliant. OK, you can see it's a little bit, takes a bit of concentration. Can you swap over and do a circle with your left hand and a cross with your right hand and see which way is easier for you, depending on whether you're right or left handed? Well, there we go. That's a, that's a game. Um, could you call it a drama game? Yes, I think you could. It's, a, it's an activity where you're using your body. Um, you're communicating with other people, you're having fun, um, you're concentration, concentrating and focusing. And also, um, it's a great little icebreaker, especially if you're in a face to face situation. Um, if you get a classroom full of people trying to do this, there'll be lots of laughter as people make mistakes. And um, that's, it's an important thing to remember that it is really OK to make mistakes and that nothing is perfect. So this is what we're going to be looking at today. I'm going to give you five different drama approaches. Some will be familiar, some less familiar. Some will use existing techniques that you already know about. Um, OK, so Imaginarium, 3D living pictures, hot spotting, storytelling whoosh, and graphic text. We're going to go through those in order. Um, some of them we will try out. Some of them we will watch videos. And some of them I'll just explain um, with lots of visual aids along the way. Um, but again, before we really get into it, I'm going to um, ask you to complete a poll. So let me just see if I can find the poll um, drop down thing on me. Um, th yeah, here we go. So I'm going to launch a poll. Who do you teach? So it's a multiple um, answer question. So you can click more than one box. OK. I can see the results of it now. And I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds, as people are still coming in to click. Do you teach these age groups? Maybe you teach more than one of these age groups. Um, perhaps some of you also teach special needs students. Um, so it may be a combination of, of those different categories. And how many of you? either teach language or use drama to teach language or maybe a bit of both. OK, so I think we've had long enough for that poll. So I'm going to end it and share the results with you so that you can see um, what people clicked. So quite a lot of preschool, mostly primary and um, quite a lot of people teaching secondary. Um, Adults, special needs and language teaching, a little bit of each, really. Um, so this is quite typical, really, 
of the sorts of teachers that I communicate with on a daily basis um, and also through my course, The Inspiring Drama Teacher, um, although it's aimed at primary school teachers, I do find that I get a lot of teachers who teach all sorts of different age groups. And the great thing about um, this course is that the techniques that we teach, and indeed virtually all the techniques on my website, dramaresource.com, can really be used with um, all sorts of different age groups and all sorts of abilities. So what I'm going to do with, with you now is to share um, a view of the course. Um, and this will also be part of um, the whole thing about talking about the five different um, techniques, because uh, they will come up when I give you this little quick guided tour of the course. So um, I'm going to click to view the course. And um, so the course is actually in two parts. So what we're looking at now is part two, the main part of the course. Um, and the reason I want to show you this is that not only are there lots of drama techniques, some of which we'll be looking at today, um, and most of many of those will have videos um, to explain them, like this one here, and they will have text too. And then they'll also have downloads um, so that you can download for your own use in your own teaching. Um, so a couple of things that are really uh, brilliant about this course and that I couldn't have predicted would, would come out of it um, I wanted to share all, all the lesson plans that I usually sell through, through my website. So all of those are included here. But also, as people go through the course, as part of the course assessment, they write their own lesson plan. And so gradually, I was starting to accumulate lots of different lesson plans from different teachers. And with their permission, I've shared um, many of these on the course itself. So we've got stuff on fairy tales, um, poetry, Greek myths, Midsummer Night's Dream and Hamlet, Antigone, vaping, and going from three to five year olds right up to um, 14, 15 year olds and above. But I thought I would just show you this particular lesson plan somebody swallowed stanley um, it was written by a marine environmental expert um, or rather the book some someone swallowed stanley was written by her and uh, the lesson plan itself was written by one of our one of the teachers on our course so it's a brilliant book um, and I won't go through the storytelling video. I'll just show you maybe like a tiny snapshot Hello there. of it. My name's Tom and it's time for a bedtime story. And tonight's tale is all about a little bag who gets lost in the sea. And it's called Somebody Swallowed Stanley. Well, we could all sit here and really enjoy that story, but um, I'm not going to share that with you now because what I really want to do is to talk about the lesson plan so here is the lesson plan and uh, for this what I normally do is to um, let people have a template and most people end up writing their lesson plan around this template um, so we've got sort of like the year group the number in the class um, the length of the session what the aim is and the objectives and the outcomes, which here it was students to empathize with sea creatures who might swallow plastic waste and students then work in pairs to create a poster. Um, so as you can see here, we've got um, an activity from the course Imaginarium um, where the students stand in a circle and they can raise their hand if they want to join the scene as 
an object or animal that might be found underwater. So this is a kind of introductory activity that can be used before you read a book or you teach a lesson. Um, and I'm going to be going through this with you very shortly. Um, but I'm just showing you how this is kind of laid out in this particular drama lesson. Um, so we've got a reading of a story and then we've got some freeze frames, uh, making different freeze frames from the story um, in groups. And we've got hot spotting as well, which I want to mention later. Um, uh, soundscapes, Conscience Alley and so on. So that's just an example of um, one of the lesson plans that you find on the course. Now, in order for you to remember what we're talking about and not having to write too many notes down while I'm talking, I've made a special um, link for you. And I'm gonna click on that link now to show you what's there. So you'll be able to download these um, individual um, resource sheets. What I'm gonna do now is to copy the, the link to that page, go back to my presentation and in the chat window, I'm going to paste the link to that page, all right? So you'll be able to click on that page if you open your chat window and um, download those resources. But right now I'm gonna shut up because my virtual self is I'm going to present to you something about Imaginarium on a video. Imaginarium is an amusing and unpredictable way to quickly collect ideas or develop a scene. The whole group stands in a circle and the teacher announces a theme. One person steps into the space and makes a freeze frame of an object or character related to the theme. As well as making the shape, the actor should announce what she is. For example, if the theme is the beach, the player can say, I am a deck chair or I am the lifeguard. The theme is the beach. I'm a beach boy. I'm a towel. I'm an umbrella. Other players add themselves into the scene by making objects or characters related to ones that are already there and announcing what they are each time. Everyone else continues to hold their positions. If you have a large group, it's not necessary for everybody to step in. In fact, it's nice to have an audience. And those who didn't take part could be the first to play in the next game. I'm an umbrella. I'm lying in the sun. I'm a palm tree. I'm the beach girl. I'm a guy who's drinking a Bahama Mama. I'm the lifeguard. I'm swimming. I'm playing volleyball. I'm a shell. I'm a hipster surfer walking around with a <laughs> I'm surfing. The game ends when all players have stepped in or when you think enough ideas have been added. And at this point, the teacher says whoosh and the students step back to the edge of the circle. Depending on the age group, I often say something like, now I'm going to say a magic word. And when I say it, everybody will move back to their places in the circle. Whoosh. And now I'm going to say whoosh. <laughs> Often students can be very enthusiastic and they will step in so quickly that it's difficult to hear individual ideas. In this case, you can ask them to put their hand up when they get an idea and then you can choose who's next. Encourage the students to think about how their characters and objects relate to each other. So for example, if somebody makes a bucket on the beach, somebody else could be the spade. And they should also consider where they will stand in relation to other people, such as a fish and a boat in the sea and an umbrella over a beach town. Ask the students to think about making contrasting shapes and using different levels, high, medium or low. Have a look at this game based on the theme of the classroom to see how well the students are doing this. 
I'm the teacher. I'm the student. I'm the blackboard. I'm her desk. I'm the chalk. I'm the clock. I'm, I'm the chair. I'm the monitor. I'm a window. I am a bookshelf. I am another chair. I'm another student. I'm a door. Well done. And whoosh. Okay then, so um, what I should point out there is that Imaginarium oh, sorry. Um, is, um, is that those were not kids, as you probably realise very quickly, but they were trainee teachers. So in fact, um, some of the videos on my website and my course are with kids, but a lot of them are with trainee teachers. So it's a good way of demonstrating um, these Okay, so what I thought would be a really good way, uh, a really good idea would be to have a quick game of Imaginarium online. So that's what we're going to do now. And um, because we've got so many of us here, I think what we'll do is we'll dispense with saying what you are. But what I would like you to do is to think of the underwater theme that I was talking about for the Someone Swallowed Stanley earlier on and I'm going to count to five and what I want you to do is to become something that might be found underwater an object or an animal and if you want to move away from your screen to show more of your body you can do that and then we're just going to have a look and see if we can guess what different people are five four three two one zero and uh, as it's underwater, I don't mind a little bit of movement as well. So maybe we can create that kind of underwaterness, lovely. And while you're doing it, maybe you can have a look at some of the other creatures and objects that might be found under the sea. Okay, and whoosh! Well done, everybody. So um, a lot of these games you can adapt to play online. And that's one of them. Um, more fun if you're playing it in a space together. And of course you could play it um, outdoors as well or socially distant. Um, can I ask everybody to make sure they are muted please because otherwise um, we get too much interference. Okay, brilliant. So um, I'd love to be able to talk a lot about each of the methods today but I'm going to really just be kind of scraping the surface of them. And um, Imaginarium, though, just to sort of say a little bit more about it, could be used with themes like books. It could be history. It could be a play. And it can be a really good way of actually developing ideas for performing a play, you know. And it, the great thing about it is that it's a bit like um, brainstorming but with your body. And so it's very, very quick. Um, and uh, it kind of means it's very creative and it doesn't take long to do. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the second technique today. And I've got another video that I'm gonna share with you. Um, and here it is, it's called 3D Living Pictures. And this is all about using images as a stimulus for drama. To start with, you need an image with as many characters as there are students. I often use a picture from a storybook or textbook, as well as documentary photos or works of art. The main thing is that there should be people in the picture and there should be some kind of story or subtext. Show the picture to the students and spend a few minutes asking them to look carefully at what's happening in the scene. You can give them speaking prompts, such as, I can see, I imagine, or I can hear. One really good prompt is, I wonder. For example, in this picture, you could say, I wonder where they are going, or I wonder what is in the boy's parcel. When they've examined the picture in greater detail, explain that you would like to bring the picture to life in the classroom. Each student 
will be asked to choose a character from the picture. When the students are ready, they should move in front of the picture, explain who they are and hold a still position. In the next extract, the students are looking at an illustration from the storybook, The Snail and the Whale by Julia Donaldson. Let's make the picture of the snail and the whale. Say who you are. I'm the whale. Okay. I'm the firefighter in the back who gives the instructions. I'm the little girl back there who's watching the whale. Beautiful. Beautiful whale. <laughs> I'm the little boy who is watching the beautiful, no, oh, the beautiful firefighter <laughs> <laughs> behind the oil. I am the little nerd who is doing something in the, he was digging in the, in the mud. I'm the sea behind beautiful. the gorgeous whale. I am the firefighter behind the whale who is spraying water on the beautiful whale. I am the boy with the shuffle. I am the dog. In front of the whale. I am the firefighter in front of the whale climbing the ladder. I am the big digger behind the whale. I am the white light dog at the very end of the coastline. I am the blue helicopter above the whale. Fantastic. This is a good way to practice prepositions. For example, I am the dog in front of the whale or I am the blue helicopter above the whale. In the next video, I'll show you a whole range of ideas for developing the picture and the story behind it through drama. Okay, so um, I'm not going to show you that next video, but I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how we are using in a way, we're using freeze frames. So we're in, in both of the um, techniques that we've talked about so far, Imaginarium and 3D living pictures. It's people using their bodies to make shapes. There might be some movement as well, but freeze frames strictly are where, where kids or students freeze to show a particular scene. Um, they might be people or they might be objects. So I just thought it would be good to have a refresher about why we use freeze frames and in particular, how they can help speaking and writing. So if children experience a role in drama, even as a frozen character or object, it can give them a basis for thinking from a different point of view or speaking from a different point of view or writing from a different point of view. Um, and this is not just during the drama activity, although that's the main thing, but also later when they think back to their experience. So a really crucial thing for me about drama is that it is a lived experience. So it's a way of learning where children or students of any age are learning and living through their imagination. So it's almost as good as any experience that you will have in life. So the great thing about this is that it means with drama, you can, you can be anywhere, you can be anything um, as part of your lesson. So here's a few different images that I would recommend for using with 3D living pictures. There's a wonderful graphic novel by Australian author and illustrator Sean Tan called The Arrival, um, which I highly recommend, which had any, any picture which has lots of characters in it. Um, but you could equally use historical artifacts such as papyrus art from ancient Egypt or the Bayeux tapestry from um, British English history. Um, but also what is great about this technique is that you can use it with artworks and those might be artworks such as this one by um, English painter Ellis Lowry. Or it might it might be stills from a movie or from a cartoon or, as I mentioned before, illustrations from um, a storybook. So what I've done is I've put together a web page which has lots of examples of these. 
So once more, what I'm going to do is in the chat, I'm going to share the web link to this page. Um, and by the way, as well as clicking on that link now in the chat window, if you go to the Eventbrite page for this um, seminar, you will find if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, the, the, the links that I've talked about. So we've got the links to the Google Drive. We've got mm. the links to this Padlet, as it's called, with the 3D living pictures. We've got a link to the course, the online course. Um, and uh, so that's another way in which you can um, have a look. So let me just go back to the 3D living pictures. OK, so. These are just a number of images that I've pulled together, some of them with the help of students and teachers who have suggested ideas to me. And you can click on any of these on the web page to see a larger view of it. And then, of course, you can zoom in and out and see um, what's there. These are just examples, but you might find some that you would like to use yourselves. Um, let's have a look, see what else is here. So Busy Beach. And it's a really nice painting. It's got lots of um, characters here and you can see clearly what they're all up to. So what I would like you to do actually is have a look at this picture now and have a look at what the different characters are doing, what the different objects are as well. And I would like you to choose now one of those characters or even an object all right so i want you to have a really good look at that character think about who they are what they might be doing what they might be thinking okay and we're going to come back to this shortly um with an activity that i'm going to describe to you through the powerpoint so let me go back to that okay so we'll come back to that picture in a short while, but I'm just going to show you a couple more pictures. Um, this is one, a painting called Work by an English painter called Ford Maddox Brown. And um, it has an incredible number of characters in it. You can't really take in what's going on, but it was all about um, the installation of one of the first sewage systems in London. And it shows people from all kind of levels of society. And I came across this through a website um, that was using this picture as a basis of work on the Victorian era with children. And I watched a video, which I'm going to show you a little bit of, which then inspired me to create a drama activity, which we're going to look at next. So I'm just going to play you a little bit of this video. There will be some sound from it shortly. Oi, stop that, or give your hair a tug. Oh, Will? Well, that's my brother. He's always causing trouble. Look at him there. He won't leave that workman's barrow alone. And there's not just him to keep me eye on. There's my little sister and the baby too. Well, I've got to look after him all since my mother died. Oh, yeah, my father's still alive, but we hardly sees him. He's always in the alehouse drinking. Well, all right, I'm going to pause that video there because it's demonstrated to you what I want to show you. Um, and that is this idea that students and or the teacher could choose an object or a character in a painting and become that character and it led me into a guessing game called who am I so I'm going to pretend to be an object in this painting and I want you to try and guess in the chat window who I am all right so all I'm going to do is to start um oh actually let me just go back a bit um let me just get rid of my chat, put my chat window to one side. 
and just uh, we go back. There we go. Um, okay, I'm something in the picture, and I want you to try and guess in the chat who I am. Oh, what a brilliant day this is. I can't believe how lovely it is. I mean, we've had rain for the last few weeks and now suddenly got this lovely weather. Everybody's coming out. Look at them all. Don't, don't you think they're having fun? Oh, I love, I love being here. I love just showing off and sweeping my ribbon through the air. And I... I absolutely adore my colour as well. Green is it's just my favourite colour in the whole wide world. All right, absolutely. So I was the green kite, as quite a few people have guessed already. Um, so as I mentioned earlier on, could you choose an object or a character? Because what I'm going to do is actually bring you out of this. Can you remember this, your character? And you're going to play this as a guessing game so I'm going to put you all however many there are of you and I know there's lots of you into breakout rooms and there are 111 people in this meeting so I'm going to make 50 breakout rooms and you're going to randomly join somebody else and in that breakout room you can switch your sound on because I would like you to take it in turns just to speak two or three sentences as your character or object and see if the other person can guess who you are, all right? Um, and don't forget, you've got that link to the picture um, uh, from earlier on in that Padlet. Um, otherwise, just try and remember and we'll see how it goes. All right. I'm not going to give you very long. I'm going to give you a minute and then I'm going to shut the breakout rooms. OK, I'm creating them right now. There might be three of you in rooms as well. brilliant well you didn't have very long but i hope at least one of you had a go at pretending to be um one of the characters or objects and hopefully that you um managed to guess who your fellow um participant was okay so just having a look at this picture again, um, you, if you didn't manage to, to guess who your partner's character or object was, you can have another look at the picture just to remind you. Um, and here I've also put some prompts that you can use with students when you're using pictures. They can say, I feel, I wonder, I'm thinking, I'm saying, I'd like to, I wish. I can see or hear. 
So there's lots of ways in which you can develop um, and bring alive pictures through 3D living objects. OK, so we have just played that activity. So we're going to go quickly on to the next activity, which is called what I call hot spotting. So it's a little bit like hot seating, except it takes place within the boundaries of a freeze frame. So can anybody think of a question they would like to ask any of the characters in the picture? Yes. Did you choose this child? So what I'm going to do is just pause there and explain what's going on. So in this workshop with teachers, we were looking at evacuated children in the Second World War, which is a topic in the English curriculum. And this, this group made an image showing children who were being selected by foster parents. So they had been taken by train to villages away from major centres which were under danger of being attacked. And then they were distributed some rather randomly to new families and obviously quite a traumatic time for them. Um, so then what I do is this technique, which is kind of a combination of freeze frames and hot seating. And it means that the audience can ask questions of people within the freeze frame. Or was the child it was assigned to me. Mm -hmm. I was going to say why she's so worried about the child being a, a problem. Yeah. I've never had children before. I don't know that they're going to be able to. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. As a teacher, what are you going to do if this child doesn't get connected? Mm. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Can anybody give her some advice then? Take it with you. <laughs> take, maybe she can take the child. All right, good. Any questions for the other characters in the scene? What about this one here? You remember what she no. said? When did you get lost? Um, <clears throat> in transit. Are you hiding? No. Why are you like that? Where, where are you? I'm just in the corner of the um, carriage. Oh, well, it's almost like you're hiding, isn't it? A little bit. What's your name? Um, she's a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so somebody was being a suitcase but there's no reason why you can't um, ask questions tiny. of an object as well as a person so um just to say just to go back to that for a moment um the great thing about hot spotting as opposed to hot seating is that with hot seating normally one person or maybe two students at a time are asked questions by the rest of the class and it can be quite hard for those students but to actually put that in the context of asking questions while students are in a freeze frame it means that they're already in character and they have the support of the people around them so it's a really great way of kind of combining those two techniques all right just because of time we're going to whoosh onwards the storytelling the whoosh, is a whoosh. Whole class storytelling activity where the students become all the different characters within the story they become the places they become the objects and they become the action to begin with the whoosh you need to have a large circle and an open space so you need to make sure you've cleared desks tables bags out of the way once in a town called verona there were two great households the capulets and the Montagues. The teacher narrates the story. They come up and act out a little bit of the story, sometimes with embedded quotations from the text, if they're confident to do that. Oh, teach me how to forget to think. Oh, teach me how to forget to think. All the students take part in the storytelling, and when the circle becomes too crowded, the teacher will say the word whoosh really loudly, and all the students move back into a wider circle, and the action is, is cleared to start again. Whoosh! On the other side of the town lived the noble Lord and Lady Montague. 
My students love doing a whoosh. They think it's the best thing in the world. It's really fun because sometimes a boy is chosen to do a girl's part and a girl's chosen to do a boy's part or sometimes they're a tree and they really don't care what part they get. They just love getting up on their feet and being a part of making that story. Okay, great. So um, now this is a whistle stop tour of different drama techniques. But for anyone who has joined this meeting uh, since the beginning, I'm going to remind people that you can get detailed instructions for all of these techniques on a special in a special Google folder um, that I've created. So if you want to find out more about storytelling whoosh. Um, let me just copy this again. And I'm going to put the link back into the chat window um, for everybody. Right, let me just type that in. Okay, so if you use your chat window, you can go to this page and freely download um, the information. Now, storytelling whoosh was invented by the University of Warwick with the Royal Shakespeare Company as a way of introducing teenagers to Shakespeare. But in fact, it's been picked up and many of you will already know this technique because it's, it's used so widely now. Um, and it's a great way of exploring stories with any age group. It doesn't have to be Shakespeare. Um, but it works well with Shakespeare because the stories are so complicated. It's a great way of explaining them. But you could use it with um, Red Riding Hood or just, you know, any story. But I'm going to show you um, a workshop that I did with some young kids. David Farmer from Drama Resource worked with the children to create the fairy farewell for Queen Elizabeth. Once upon a time. The programme uses Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream. Titania and her fairies, now she called for them and they came flying in. They were looking after a beautiful young prince. The fairies decided to make a crown of flowers for the prince. Shakespeare is often seen as something that can only be accessed by secondary students and you have to really sit down and analyse the, the text, whereas they're just great stories and if you can get across a great story to children, then they can run with servant it. servant of Oberon, he saw Bottom and he thought, I'm going to cast a spell. They, they turned him turn into a donkey. Into... Oh. And the donkey made a noise. She fell in love with a donkey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> OK, great. So you can, you know, you can see how well um, that works with young kids as well. Now, at this point in the meeting, I'm going to hand over to Josie. I'm just going to briefly stop sharing. And um, Josie is going to talk to you about something that we did on one of our Zoom meetings um, that we have monthly as part of the course. So Josie, would you like to switch on your sound and I will um, then share my screen again. Okay, sure. Okay, so we uh, did some work with this graphic text called the Trojan Horse. And first of all, we did a kind of reader's theater. Now, I don't know if you know what reader's theater is. Most of you probably do. Um, you basically just read around a circle and read every um, line that there is. Now, of course, in graphic text, you don't have lines, you have bubbles, speech bubbles. So you read one speech bubble at a time and you go around the circle. And you don't necessarily act it out, but you can. I usually, the first time that I do something like a reader's theater, I don't ask kids to actually act it out just to get used to the text. And then the second time round, we do, we, we know a bit what's going on. And then I ask them to actually act it out a bit more. Now I was saying to David, I've, I do Shakespeare. I, I did a, a master's degree in teaching Shakespeare at the Warwick University. And one of my favorite plays is Hamlet. 
And I thought, I teach every age group, actually. I teach very young ones, um, K2 and 3. And the eldest ones I teach are the uh, are secondary students. So I'm hoping to do something again with Hamlet, maybe this summer. And I would like to actually use this thing. Now you can you can download it if you like and do the same thing with it. You do your readers theater first and then the second time you read it, you could do it any other way, of course, but I would recommend you read it first and then you act it out. And um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed that. The kids I teach at school, because I teach in a primary school, in fact, um, they're English as a second language learning students and they're really, their English is not very good at all. So I could never do that with them. But um, I have used different texts um, and I'm going to use a text called uh, Do Unto Otters. I can't remember who, the, <laughs> who the, the author is, but you can look it up on uh, Google, Do Unto Otters. And it's a brilliant, very, very funny book. Um, so I will do that with my P6 students or some of them, probably not all of them. But the nice thing about this is that you don't have a lot of text. You just have very little text and hopefully it will work with simpler text. Of course, Shakespeare is not simple um, and it takes a bit of warming up to really get the kids into it. Um, I've done it with very young kids. Not Hamlet, but I've done Midsummer Night's Dream like uh, David did. And uh, one of my friends who I've met on David's course, Jan, she's actually here, Jan Zhao. Um, we do things together. I zoom in on her lessons. She has her students face to face. And I come in as the Zoom teacher and it works. And we did Shakespeare in February. We did Midsummer Night's Dream. We used a lot of David's things from Drop of a Hat. That's this book. Uh, can you see it? No. <laughs> I'll show it to them later, Jason. Okay, David will show you in a minute. <laughs> and it's got lovely uh, lesson plans in it. We use that and of course my own experience. I've done Midsummer Night's Dream with primary school many, many times. And at the end of the course, the kids said, why was it only three days? <laughs> so that was really great. We were very happy that they asked that. Anyway, so yeah, and I'm about to write um, a Zoom drama come face to face. I think I'll do both for a college here in Hong Kong. And it's actually for their kindergarten and it's also Midsummer Night's Dream so mm, <laughs> I'm hoping that goes well um yeah I am looking forward to that so that's really what I wanted to say okay right thank you very much Josie um You're I welcome. wanted Josie to talk just because um we have these monthly zoom meetings and I usually bring along an idea as I did with this particular meeting um I've, this book I don't I don't just use my own books when I'm teaching uh and when I'm running my courses and so on but this particular book had uh, all this stuff on using graphic text and um as well as readers theater you can act out um you can bring characters to life um make sort of freeze frame scenes um do sort of thought tracking or inner voices improvisation, dance, drama and storytelling. And there, you know, it's a little bit like the 3D living pictures, bringing drama alive from a visual stimulus, but highly recommended. And also I recommend this, this book um, by Larry Schwartz and Debbie Nyman. Okay, well, I'm gonna move on as ever, but uh, just before we get towards the end of the meeting, I just wanted to show you a little bit of one of the groups working on graphic text oh, in our Zoom meeting. <laughs> I'm just going to give a bit of um, directorial um, interference. And that oh, is yeah. that when you present it, you may have already been meaning to do this, but I'd like to see you act and I'd like to see more of you. So 
just seeing a student, you know, a student's face and reading aloud, we're not seeing much. So when you um, practice it again, maybe can you move away from your okay from your computer so that you yeah. can actually act out the scene as well right obviously you've got to be able to read the words on the screen which could be a challenge for some of us <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah just to get a bit more drama into the whole situation okay so i'm going to give you um uh, what's the time now i'm going to give you a few more minutes and then i'm going to call you back to show me what you've done all right another five minutes okay hon right. greek king made a big mistake he invited all the gods and goddesses to his wedding except eris the goddess of quarrels and strife suddenly at the height of the feasting and fun eris appeared here is a wedding gift for you <laughs> <laughs> this should make a beautiful brawl. Look, a golden apple. Me, you see, it says it's for the fairest. Who says you are the fairest? Am I not the queen of the gods? Okay, so that's just a little bit from um, one of our Zoom meetings, just so that you can get an idea. Um, they tend to be quite relaxed. I usually bring along an idea, but we quite often end up talking about something completely different because people bring along their problems or their own ideas and we share them. Um, and we have storytellers and actors and teachers from Canada, Hong Kong, Malaysia, China, the UK, Australia, all over the world taking part. Um, many of you will already know my website, but I thought I'd just remind you of it here. Um, you can find most of the activities we talked about today, if not all, will be found there. You can also find um, lesson plans, lesson ideas for free, as well as ones that you can buy. Um, and uh, just to, yeah, I think I remind you of what we've talked about today. Imaginarium, 3D living pictures, hot spotting, storytelling whoosh, and graphic texts. And I hope that you got some ideas um, from there that you'll be able to use in your own circumstances. Um, but also before you go, um, I wanted to let you know that I'm doing a special offer for people who have watched this webinar. If you have not yet joined our brilliant course, you can get, it's already actually been reduced in price um, temporarily um, to $149, which gives you access for at least a year to all the videos and all the downloads and all the monthly Zoom meetings. So this code, Get Inspired 15, I've also put this on the Eventbrite participants page. Um, and that is valid until the end of March 2022. All right. So um, I'm going to stop the share there. And I think we've got like a couple of minutes. If anybody has any questions, then perhaps they would like to ask them in the chat. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just going to try and get the window back for all of us. Um, and let's see, I can't quite work out how to do David, that. somebody was asking um, about the Facebook page. Maybe you can put the link for that up in the oh, chat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Yes. I'll, um, what I'll do oh, is I'm going to uh, make this into a um, YouTube video. Um, let me just get the chat window up and uh, let me just also get the gallery of people. There we go. So how can you use graphic text for teaching language? Well, the best, the great thing about um, drama techniques is that they can be used with any level. So what you need to do is find the right material for your level, for your age group, and um, then you can use these techniques quite freely. So my short answer to that is that I, I run courses quite often for 
Nile Language School in Norwich. And one of the things we talk about is bringing course books to life, you know, so find things that students are already doing on their courses. And quite often you'll find um, graphic texts within course books that will be very appropriate. Um, the Facebook page, let me just uh, get that um, up and I will send you the link to um, the Drama Resource Facebook page in a moment. Um, is there anyone from South Africa who would like to link with someone to share ideas? Well, do answer that. One of the great things about our course, actually, is that um, we do get people joining up together and creating their own resources. Um, Josie um, uh, teaches with a teacher in China um, with a mixture of both live and um, online teaching and that goes Josie that goes really well doesn't it yes it does yes um, it so it's a great way of kind of combining ideas together as well I put the link to our standard Facebook page in the um, chat but we also have a special page which is for people who are on the course as well um, the course is online and it starts anytime you like so you can Lorraine ask that question you can join um, anytime you like. Um, it would help you, Rashmi, how can I join a course to train as a drama teacher? Well, this could be a first step for sure. Um, and what's great about it is that you get all the techniques and you also get a community of people to help you as well, um, both inside the course activities and outside afterwards. Okay, um, right. On the YouTube video, I'll also put the links that I've talked about, okay, in the text underneath. And you will get a link to that video afterwards, all right? So any questions that I haven't answered um, in the chat because I haven't seen them or haven't had time, um, I'll see if I can put you right um, afterwards through email. So thanks very much, everybody. And... Um, Normally, we have a lot more to and fro and, and chat and get to know each other. But we've had so many people here today, we haven't been able to do that. But thanks very much for coming. And um, great to see you if I haven't met you before. And if I have met you before, I'll probably see you again soon. All right. <laughs> thanks a lot to everybody from wherever you are, from all over the world. And uh, um if you want to send me an email afterwards, um, you can do that. I will put my email into the chat and because uh, I think somebody did ask for that. So that's gone into the chat right now. OK, thanks a lot, everyone. I'm going to stop there and say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi. Thanks to everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye